Hey, what is going on you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape and welcome to a brand new loot video for you all today. So today I bring you guys loot from 10 hours of killing the crazy archaeologist. Yet again, another wilderness video. I feel like I'm going to be staying in the wilderness um, for pretty much most of this month. I have uh, quite a few other ideas coming up. So yeah, uh, but the goal for this video was to see how many shards we can get, malediction and odium. Current price is shown are one5 4 mil for the Odium and about 1 mil for the Malediction. However, thanks to the recent Nex update, the Odium Shard is selling for much more than the price that was shown that uh, was 1.4 million. So hopefully we are going to be lucky enough to obtain quite a few during this 10 hour loot video and we can sell them live on screen and see how much they are actually worth. A lot of range gear has gone up in the past month or so, so that's just kind of a shield that will be useful for your range DPS, but it's usually uh, used at lower levels. Uh, most uh, high level rangers use the buckler or something along the lines of that but nevertheless i will not complain i think that makes this a uh, really good time to be camping the crazy archaeologist of all times uh, i think the last time i actually did this was a loot from a 1000 video about two and a half years ago and the uh, price of the odium shard was actually 1.4 mil on the dot at that time so i'm really glad it's worth much more nowadays and hopefully that can uh, just add to the price check once we are done but yeah, the overall gear for this video was just max strength. Uh, you know, a little bit of a budget setup, I'd say. But we are in the wilderness, so we didn't want to bring bandos or anything like that. I was doing the spec method where I dump all of my Dragon Dagger uh, special attacks on the Crazy Archaeologist. And I follow that up with the Vigorous Chain Mace DPS, as well as Vengeance. And with all of that, usually he dies pretty quickly. Uh, sometimes he doesn't, though. And you do have to use those Anglerfish or the Bruise in the inventory. I'm not going to lie, uh, I did risk my HP quite a bit during this video and uh, there were consequences that we will shortly see because of that so just be careful this thing does hit much higher than I expected. Using this melee method to kill this crazy archaeologist uh, can be dangerous especially in moments like this when you forget that you're past 20 wilderness with a fighter torso and unfortunately for me I, uh, I did not have that protected like I did my void so when I lost that torso I genuinely did lose that torso and it, yeah it really hurt i recently was complaining in my uh, last video about not having angler boots to complete a master clue step well i did get those boots but uh unfortunately now i don't have a fighter torso for the master clue step so after the first hour was completed it was a pretty upsetting hour no shard drop and just one hard clue scroll so it wasn't really making up for the torso loss uh, i did switch to full obsidian minus the helmet i guess i just wanted to stick to the mutagen just because sometimes if a kill is slow that Venom will help you out a little bit, so I figure why not. Plus, it looks pretty cool. But I continued on. You know, the torso loss is okay. That just means that you guys might get a Barbarian Assault video in the future. But either way, I'll get that taken care of eventually. I was really enjoying this method, but uh, do keep in mind you can use Magic here. And if you do decide to use Magic here, uh, you can actually take no damage if you're keeping a distance and keeping your eye on his attacks. Well, the bang tab is looking pretty nice. As you can see, there's a lot of variety of drops here. But the main one we want to see is the Odium Shard 2. Ladies and gentlemen, we did receive it pretty early on in the video one hour and 50 minutes in and it looks so nice to see on the ground so that was really nice really a boost of motivation there because this is such a repetitive method to do here uh, that it's a lot of clicking and I was also killing abyssal demons on another account I was working on a very long-term loot video that should be done tomorrow night so you guys will see that soon so yeah back to the method of killing this thing you know it is always gonna range you so you're gonna want to have prey range on and uh, when it's not ranging you it's gonna be meleeing you and if you're keeping your distance when it throws out the books, uh, you can definitely save yourself from getting hit quite a bit there. Well, I was not expecting a second Odium Shard two hours and 30 minutes in this time, less than an hour after the first one, so this was just incredible. I was making over 1 mil an hour guaranteed here just because of those drops. And alongside that, I was getting Onyx Bolt Tip drops and all of the other average loot that was adding up, and uh, in addition to that, those hard clue scrolls that we're going to be saving towards the end of the video. In regards to the cost of supplies for this 
this video, I was rarely using uh, food and potions, but you know, sometimes I would have to eat some angler fish. The main cost really comes down to how much ether I was using in my Vigora's chain mace, which I think I ended up using just about 5,000 for this video, and of course a little bit of Zolra scales, but other than that, I uh, did use a Blood Fury, which was okay because I only had so little few charges left on it, I figured I'd just use it for this video. And it was beneficial, but it's certainly not necessary here. Um, you know, it's really just based on how high your special attacks are if you're doing this method, if you're going to have a successful kill or not. No matter what, your Vigor's Chain Mace is going to be hitting constant 40s, 50s, and 60s. I think I even hit a 70 at one point with this gear, so it's really uh, incredible DPS, even though his defense level is 240. Now, I was not actually avoiding the book attacks, um, just because I didn't really have to. I mean, I would get close to dying a few times, and if I paid a little bit more attention, I could have avoided avoided them every time, but I just really didn't go out of my way to do so because, you know, most of the time I was able to tank every single kill. So the Malediction Shard and the Odium Shard, which are the, no doubt about it, the best two drops you can get here, are both 1 in 256, and I was easily killing over 60 an hour, so those odds aren't really that bad. You can also expect the uncommon drops like the Rune Battle Axe, the Adamant Javelins, and the Steel Arrows, but those are all on the, you know, strange rare drop table. I do wish that the Fedora that you can get here, which is 1 and 128 as well was worth a little bit more money because you know it's not the most fashionable thing but it is uh, kind of a rare here but I, I don't know I guess you kill it so quickly that it's never going to be worth too much plus I can't really remember the last time I saw another player wearing a fedora so I don't know maybe they should make it look cooler I've also heard rumors in the past of adding a pet to this boss but I just don't see that happening I mean what would it be like a mini uh, crazy archaeologist or a book following you around really not sure so I don't think they're ever going to do that but I think there's always going to be incentive for killing this thing. It is a popular task among Wilderness Slayer, and uh, it's a really good thing for Iron Man too. And ladies and gentlemen, the third Odium Shard, which is great for Iron Man and main accounts, especially with the prices these days. That is incredible to see three Malediction, oh no, three Odium Shards, excuse me. No Malediction Shards yet, but that's okay though. Odium is much more expensive, so I will, uh, I will happily take it. I also managed to hit 120 million strength XP, so so that was, uh, that was pretty nice. So alongside the Odium Shard drops and the Malediction Shards, you can also expect some Rune Crossbows, which is why this is kind of a popular monster to kill for early level Ironman accounts. Also a great access to Dragon Arrows, which are 1 in 128, and you get them as a quantity of 75, which is a pretty decent amount. And those have skyrocketed in price because of Nex. So once again, another great drop that is much more valuable and pretty common to receive here at the Crazy Archaeologist. I feel like this video is an advertisement to encourage people to kill him, but, you know, I guess you just gotta determine the profit, see if it's worth your time. Uh, one thing that I will say was there was zero PKers the whole time during this video. And here we are at the very end with 10 hours of Crazy Archaeologist completed. I was a little upset that there was no PKers, but uh, you know, there was a lot of anti-PKing last video, so maybe in the next Wilderness video we'll see that. But overall, let's focus on the loot. Zero Malediction Shards. We have to do the three hard Clue Scrolls real quick before we get into the price check. We always gotta do the Clue Scrolls. Got a lot of Wilderness Steps with these hard clues. I always see that as a trend, but nevertheless, we did them pretty quickly, and now it is time for the first price check. This is all of the GP, all of the normal items that you can expect outside of the rares. We're going to do the shards next. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first price check does come out to be rounded up uh, 5.6 million GP. And now it is time to price check the Odium shards. Um, they do show on screen for just about 4.1 million, which means that just from the prices we see, loot from 10 hours of Crazy Archaeologist adds up to about 9.7 mil. But luckily for me, putting in those shards in the grand exchange for 4.1 mil, I was rewarded with 6.1. So we got an extra 2 mil GP, which was really nice. Uh, you know, it's a really good time to be killing the crazy archaeologist. I don't think I could have timed this better. So I'm really excited. Uh, overall amount from selling pretty much everything and the shards included, we did end up with just about 11.7 million. With a lot of long bones as well, free construction XP, and three hard clues to open. Let's go ahead and 
and finish this up. Over 1.1 mil an hour. I probably spent about two to three mil in supplies. And from the first clue, we're looking at just about 32K, an average 113K from the second one and 400K from the third. That is not bad at all. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I promised you guys a video yesterday and uh, I wanted to upload it at 10 o'clock. Well, it's 4.44 in the morning now. It was a little bit late, but uh, it was an all-nighter for me. It was a lot of fun. I'll see you guys again tomorrow night with another wilderness one. Until next time, Mr. No Sleep, out.